After retiring as a naval architect, Sten Schostrand turned his attention to maritime archaeology. It took him two years to find his first shipwreck off the east coast of Malaysia. Diving down there 46 meter, rather clear, clear water, and, and I could see this mound of, of pottery. It, it's about 30 ton of pottery. You, you start thinking about how old it is. And I found out this cargo had been laying there about 40 years before Christopher Columbus was sailing to the New World. There's a shipwreck, Doug. There's a shipwreck, Doug. And when we did find it after two years searching, I was so excited about that. So I actually surfaced without a single pot in my hand, and I haven't even touched it. Sten has made it his mission to search the South China Sea for shipwrecks, looking for old porcelain cargo that can reveal the trading history of this ancient maritime highway. He gave the name Nanhai to the very first shipwreck he discovered. Nanhai Ocean is the old Chinese name for the South China Sea. Sten's team immediately began recovery work on the site. As they searched the scattered remains, the team made an interesting discovery, a hidden compartment below the ship's main cargo deck. Because of the curvature of, of the lower part of the ship, they had made a flat deck to accommodate storage on. And below that flat deck, we find a couple of unusual pieces. We find a royal seal, we find the seven pieces of blue and white porcelain, and a couple of other unusual pieces hidden below this false deck. When you see the different parts in that hidden compartment, it seems like a sort of a gift to give to somebody else. It is quite possible that this royal seal was part of a royal gift. As a result of this discovery, Sten changed the shipwreck's name to the Royal Nanhai. The recovery team returned to the wreck to gather the porcelain that made up the main cargo. Sten's team soon found out that the Royal Nanhai's main cargo consisted of Celadon ware, a jade green glazed type of early Chinese stoneware. China at this time was still under what we call the Ming Ban which is when Emperor Hongwu in 1371 prohibited private trade. It's a very interesting change of trade in the South China Sea. Because of China's export ban, during this time, Thailand seemed to overtake China as the main center of porcelain production and trade in Southeast Asia. From kiln excavations at the Thai kiln sites, we find out that about 1370, 1380, there were major developments. And that coincide with the Ming Ban. The combination of finding celadons made in Thailand, similar in design and decorative patterns as the Chinese before, suggests that Chinese potters were involved in the production. Looking for more clues to confirm the precise date of the Royal Nanhai, Sten's recovery team returned to the wreck site. This time, the search was for wood samples from the ship's structural remains for carbon dating analysis. Sten's closer examination of the wood revealed another valuable insight into the Royal Nanhai's story. The ships themselves, after 1371, were built from tropical hardwood, which doesn't grow in China, but they were built on a Chinese design. So it seems like when the potters left China, because of the Ming Ban, out of work, the shipbuilders had to leave with them as well. And that's why we see the Chinese design that tropical hardwood, Thai wood, or, you know, at least from Southeast Asia. The Royal Nanhai provided an insight into the tenacity of the Chinese artisans and merchants who found a way to work around the export ban until the mid-1500s, when China once again opened up private trade. It shows a pattern, yes. When you are not allowed to do something in one country, we go to the next one. And when there is a need for some specific type of pottery or product, we'll make it someplace and we will trade with these countries. And that's what these shipwrecks uh, is showing us all. 